Today, we're going to use the Limelight 3A to figure out how far away we are from an April tag so that we know that it should still be 50. If we look at our calculated distance, our calculated distance is showing 49.728. Being able to tell how far away your robot is from an April tag using a camera can be a real challenge in robotics. And by today's video, I'm going to show you the easiest way that you can use to get your exact distances that will be accurate within half a millimeter. I'm Brogan Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics and design for over a decade now. We're going to start by writing some quick code so we know what our target area is, getting that from our limelight. Then we're going to measure out some quick distances at known points from our robot so we can see how far away we are from that distance. And then we can plot that data onto a curve, and then we can use that curve equation to be able to then calculate out our distance. And I'll walk you through all of this, what sounds really complicated, but at the end of the day, you'll be able to do this by yourself, no problem, with this step by step. So to be able to estimate our distance, we're going to use the target area that the April tag is taking up from the camera. So to get a better example, let's do a quick uh, test here. I presently have an April tag, and this April tag is 200 millimeters. If I were to move this directly in front of my camera, currently this is taking up, let's say, 80% of the camera's field of view, because it's basically all you can see. If I remove it all the way up, that would be 100% of the field of view. If I remove it all the way back here, that would be about 50% of the field of view. All the way back here, that's maybe 15%. All the way back here, that's maybe 10 or even 5% of the field of view. So the target area tells you how much of this camera's field of view that you are currently looking at in the video is being used by the April tag. And because we know that there is a fixed size on this April tag, in this case, this one's 200 millimeters, and you're going to have to know what your size is. Depending on how much of your field of view is, because we know how big the field of view is by how many pixels it is, and we know how long this is, if we can calculate how much percentage this thing takes up in the area of our field of view, we can know exactly how far away we are because we have those couple fixed distances. So for step number one, we need to get some simple code so we can actually get our current data from our limelight. If you have already followed through my tutorial on the limelight calibration for the correct pipeline for the April tag, uh, you're going to need to do that first. So you can check that in the link down below to make sure that your limelight is in the April tag mode and is properly calibrated. Step number two is we need to actually write up some simple code to be able to turn back our target area. If you've already followed through my tutorial on doing that before, you can go ahead and skip on to the next step in the chapters down below. Otherwise, I'm going to explain this really, really quick. We have a few import statements that basically just pull in all the data that we need. I've created our limelight object and we have a new double called distance we'll use later. I also have a test bench for some other things that I'm going to be using because you need to initialize the limelight and the IMU so we can use megatag2 here. I'll explain that in a moment. So inside of initialize the statement, we've initialized our uh, testing bench. That's just what my robot is, so all your robot hardware. And then I've initialized the limelight and I'm using pipeline 8 because that is from my April tag. In this tutorial, I'm using April tag 0. That's 200 millimeters long. You're going to have to make sure you have this calibrated to the April tag that you are going to use. Then on the start, we're going to go ahead and start up the limelight. Oops, I don't want to do that. And then for our loop, we're going to get our current IMU orientation. And then we're going to feed that orientation into the limelight. Then we'll get the latest result from the limelight, which is, of course, for April tag zero. And if our result is valid, we're going to get our current bot pose. We're going to get the target X. We're going to print the target area. And we're going to print whatever the bot pose is. So we can get that data. With this all set up now, let's go over to our robot and let's start getting some of our target area and some of our target data. So looking at our robot, we're going to start up that quick program that we ran before so we know what our April tag distance is. And I'm going to grab myself a tape measure and I'm going to set myself up from the April tag 50 centimeters away. Now the key here on the April tag is you want to make sure that your limelight is not perfectly level with the April tag. You end up flipping orientation. So my April tag is slightly higher. Another way of doing that is just move your limelight lower or change the angle of your camera. So I'm going to measure from the camera itself, and I'm going to move my robot up until I'm about 50 centimeters away. Well, rather than about until I'm 50 centimeters away. There's no about here because we have an actual tape measure, so we can actually get ourselves 50. Okay, so I'm now 50 centimeters away, and I'll take a look at my target area, and I will note that down on my graph here. So my target area presently is 12.25 up to 12.3. And now we're going to repeat this process. I'm going to move the robot back to 100 centimeters away. Making sure I try to keep my target X 
as close to it as I had before. Not quite far enough. Okay, we're now at 100 centimeters away, so let's check our target area this time around. And it looks like on our target area, we're kind of fluctuating between 3.0485 and 3.0793. So I'm going to note those down. Let's back up again until we're 150 centimeters away. When you're using a tape measure like this, it can help to have a friend to help hold the tape measure, or you can use your hand to support out at your distance and making sure your tape measure is straight. That's about 150 away. So let's check our target area again. Looks like we're between 1.3528 and 1.737. And we're going to move ourselves until we're about two meters away now. Okay, that is two meters now. Now let's check our target area one last time on two meters. Looks like we are fluctuating between 0 0.7797 and 0 0.7647562. So let's jot that down and let's get back to actually doing some rough calculations now. So with that target data, here's what I've come up with. From 50 centimeters, 100 centimeters, 150, 200 centimeters away, this is the averaged out value that I got from my target area. This was my target min and this was my target max. So effectively, I just took what was the lowest number I was reading, what was the highest number I was reading, because it was a little bit fuzzy, and I just took the average value between the two. Because for our purposes today, this is likely good enough, unless you need within half a millimeter of accuracy, this should get you close enough. So we're going to take this data, and we're going to go ahead and insert a chart on this data. And the, so we'll just go ahead and insert, insert chart so that we can tabulate it out. And if we look, if we were to add in a, uh, let's go ahead and add in a trend line on this. We can see that our trend line is going down, but clearly this is not in a straight line. So there's actually a better way that we can solve this so we can know what our actual curve of our data is. So I'm going to head on over to mycurvefit.com. And this is a great website where I can basically put in data points and it will uh, automatically track for us what our curve is. So we don't have to go through and do a lot of that mathematics. So I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste in our data. And I'll just go ahead and select both of these. And it's going to calculate out what is a curve that fits best for us. So when we look at our, our curve here, we notice it's not actually linear. Instead, it's actually closer to an inverse square or a power law curve. So effectively, rather than our area getting proportionally smaller as it goes, the camera sees the tag as being smaller as we move backwards. And if we double the distance back that we're looking, the image is not actually half as small, it's actually four times as small because it's taking up four times less area. So that's where we're going to be using an inverse square rule to actually be able to calculate though this curve. So in order to get the distance that we are away from that camera, we're going to take the square root of how big the tag is inside of the camera or our target area. So the last thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure that we have the uh, correct scale that we're going to need uh, that we're going to chug in later. So I'm actually going to come down here to nonlinear in the fit method and I'm going to select a power curve. And it's going to give us the scale value that we're looking for here, which is, in our case, is going to be our y, which is uh, 30,665.95x to the power of negative 1.99612, which is going to effectively going to be negative 2. So this is our equation to be able to find the curve. So let's go ahead and plug that in and create a method so we can keep track of how that actual is our distance. But underneath our loop, I'm going to make a new public double. And I'm going to call this one get distance from tag. And when you give it one argument, we're going to give a double of our target area. So first, we're going to create our scale. So I'm going to make a new double called scale. And this is going to be equal to the y value in our equation. In this case, it's going to be 30,665.95. So 30,665.95 is our scale. And we can calculate our distance. So our distance is going to be a new double called distance. That's going to be equal to our scale divided by our target area. And then we can simply return our distance. So now that we've got a new public double for getting our distance from the tag, and we can now put that inside of our loop. So inside our loop, of course, we're going to get our results. And if we have a valid result, then we can go ahead and get our current bot pose. We're going to go ahead and assign a value of distance is going to be equal to our 
get distance from tag, and we pass in our limelight result dot get target area. And then let's go ahead and actually add our telemetry here. So we say telemetry dot add data. In this case, it's going to be distance. And we're going to do our distance value that we got from our getting our distance tag. And that's it. Let's go ahead and check to make sure that this math actually works. Let's move ourselves 50 centimeters away so that we know that it should still be 50. And we are roughly 50 away, give or take, you know, half a millimeter. If we look at our calculated distance, our calculated distance is showing 49.728. Let's go ahead and move ourselves back a little bit. Right now, our calculated distance is saying 120, 119.9, somewhere in that realm. And when we pull ourselves up, we are about 119.9, which is pretty darn close to our 120. We're going to move back even further. Right now, our calculated distance says 173. Let's check our distance here. And we are, oh, it's hard for me to read that at that far away. We're about 173 and a half. And right now it's reading 173.49. So that works perfectly well for us to be within 0.1 millimeters based on our distance. So I hope you found that a helpful tutorial and be able to estimate your distances between. And even though it's not absolutely accurate, <laughs> with give or take, about half a millimeter in uh, our distances, provided we had our original equations and original distances measured appropriately. This is well within, at least for me, my design tolerances and how accurate I actually need to be away from that April tag. If you want more advice, you let me know in the comments down below, or you can consider joining the robotics community for some code snippets, more CAD, and some one-on-one -on -one feedback from myself. Otherwise, if you got more questions, ask them in the comments down below, and best of luck on your next robotics project.